This is Geometry, Chapter 13, Section 4, in which we will study simulations. A lot of times, mathematicians will create what's called a probability model to simulate random events. Sometimes it's because of cost, sometimes it's because of physical impracticality. You know, if we're shooting free throws and I want somebody to shoot 10,000 free throws, their arms are going to get tired. And so that will affect the data. So instead of actually doing th those things, we do simulations to help figure it out. And there are some rules for how to design your simulations. Your first rule is you have to take into account everything that could happen and the probability that it will. Okay. In the free throw shooting case there, it's either making or missing. Those are the only things that can happen. You know, if it's a multiple choice test, then A, B, C, and D would be the outcomes or whatever choices you had. Okay. Part two, or rule two, you need to state assumptions that you're making. Uh, this could be that the only outcomes are making or missing. There's no other choice. Uh, it could be that everything in the situation applies to the situation, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Then gets we get to the fun part, and rule three is where you actually describe the simulation you're going to use. Now, this could involve dice, this could involve coins, it could involve spinners, graphing calculators, it could even be putting things on little pieces of paper and drawing them out of a hat. Okay, as long as the probabilities are correct, you can do it. Now, this is the part where you have to get creative. And you have to think, what can I do to make this work? Now, notice the pronoun that I chose. You need to get creative. Okay, I'll tell you if you're on the right track or not, but I'm not going to tell you what your simulation model should be, because then it's me doing it. You've got to think about what's going on, and you've got to choose something that will work. Will you always choose the same thing as your neighbor? Probably not. Okay, you think differently. But as long as it matches the situation and the probabilities are correct, you can use whatever tactic you want. I've given you a few options to think about. And then finally, we need to define what a trial is. Is it one flip of the coin? Is it rolling three dice? Is you know, what's what are we trot? What's our trial going to look like? And how many trials are we going to do? Okay, let's apply this idea. There's a restaurant that's having a contest for some fabulous, wonderful prize, and they put their game pieces on the large drink cups. To be the grand prize winner, okay, you have to collect all six game pieces. You know, it probably spells out a word or something. Now, we're going to make a big statement here to make life easier for us. Each piece is equally likely. Okay, it's not how these contests really work, but to get your... Uh, feet wet on this, we're going to assume each piece is equally likely. Our job is to design a simulation to estimate how many large drinks I need to buy in order to win the super fabulous prize. Okay. First thing we need to do is determine the outcomes and the probability. Well, they tell me there's six game pieces, so I'm going to call them one, two, three, four, five, and six. And each probability, they said, was equal, so one chance out of six for each one of those. Okay. Now, we need to state our assumptions. We're going to assume that everything on the cup is actually one of the six game pieces. You don't have one that says you win a free fry. 
or sorry, try again. Okay. Everything you take off the cup, every one of the pieces you get, is actually one of the six pieces in play. Now we need to design what we're going to do. We have six things that are all equally likely. That sounds like a great job for using a die. Because you have six things on a die that are all equally likely. So it fits this this uh, situation perfectly. Now we need to decide what our trial looks like. What are we trying to do? We're trying to get all six numbers. So a trial is going to be rolling a die and writing down what we got until each of the six numbers has come up once. Okay. It could be six rolls if you just roll a different number each time, boom, you're done. It could be 500 rolls if you just can't seem to roll a one or something. But you're going to roll in as many times as it takes until you get all six numbers. That's one trial. Then you're going to repeat this until you have 20 trials. So one time it took eight turn, eight rolls, one time it took 15, one time it took 11, whatever. And you're going to average those values and say, hey, on average it took me 15 times before I was able to get all six numbers. Now, like I say, these contests don't work this way with the equal likelihoods. There's always something that's harder to get, and that's why it's tougher to win those. But, for our purposes, makes life a little easier to work with. Now let's look at a second case. We have our star hockey player who made 18% of his penalty shots. Okay. Our job is to design a simulation using a random number generator to estimate the probability that he'll make the next shot. Okay. Now we could actually do this. Have them take a hundred shots. But what would happen is the skater would get tired, the goalie would get tired, each one would pick up on habits and tendencies from the other, and it would skew our data and change this value. Now, fortunately, a random number generator doesn't get tired, so we can work with that. Right. What are the outcomes? He can either make or he can miss. And the probabilities are 18% make, 82% miss, because that's what's left. Our assumption is there's no other options. It's either going to be a make or a miss. There's no tie, there's no timeout was called, or anything like that. Okay. Now they told us to use a random number generator. I'm going to set my random number generator to give me integers from 1 to 100. And I'm going to say anything from number 1 through number 18, we're going to call a make, because it said 18%. And anything from nine, uh, 19 sorry, to 100 is going to be a miss, because that's the rest of the values. Now we have random number generators in the classroom there. The graphing calculators have a random number function, and I'll show you how to use that when we're in class there. So a trial is going to be generating one number, hitting, hitting the random number button on the calculator. That's going to be a trial. I'm going to get a number. I'm going to look at that number. Was it under, was it in 1 through 18? Then I'm going to mark make. Was it outside of 1 through 18? Then I'm going to mark miss. And I'm going to do it 100 times and then count how many makes I had to get a percentage of what probability he has of hitting the next shot. Okay. Now one more idea that we have to deal with is called the expected value. 
Okay, it's the weighted average value that you expect to get. And the idea is this, you're going to be doing an experiment with numerical results, like generating that random number in the last one. Okay, what you have to do is take every possibility that could happen and multiply the value of the possibility times the probability that it happens. Okay. In the previous case, every one of those was one out of a hundred chance because there was 100 possibilities. So what, you know, the way we would start is one times one one hundredth, two times one one hundredth, three times one one hundredth, and so forth down to 100 times 1 one hundredth. And then we would add all those things together. That's the last step, is to find the sum. Take a value times its probability, repeat that until you go through everything that can happen, and then add it all up. So let's consider the, the scenario where you're rolling two dice. And they want us to find the expected value of the sum. Okay. When you roll two dice and add them together, you can get anything from 2 through 12. Okay. And each one has a different probability. Now, rather than bog you down in where they came from, I can show you that in class. But the probability of getting a 2 is 1 out of 36. So I'm going to take 2 times 1 out of 36. And that gives me 2 out of 36. Yes, I know it reduces. But everything is going to be out of 36. So I'm going to leave it that way so my common denominator is easier to work with. For a 3, the probability is 2 out of 36. So when we multiply, we get 6 out of 36 and so forth down the line. Notice after you pass 7, the numbers, probability numbers get smaller. Okay. So we took the value times its probability to get the product over here. And then I added all of these things up. So I sat there with my calculator and I did 236 plus 636 plus 1236, blah, blah, blah. And it turns out that the expected value, the average value, is 7. Now what this means is, over time, if you rolled the dice 100 times and averaged out what you got, you should get close to 7. Is it a guarantee? No. Nothing in life is, but it's a good estimate of what over time should happen. Okay. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in with you and we'll see you in class.